Okay, so section 2.5 is solutions. Now, if the problem is non-separable, so if it is separate, it can only be one or the other. It either is or isn't, right? And if it is, you would solve it using the separable method, okay? But if it isn't, this is a method you can use, okay? It's the um, solutions by substitution. So if you're seeing one on the homework or on the review, which I will post in Canvas, by the way, when I post these videos, I'll post the review in there too in case you want to look at that during the weekend as well. But we'll cover it on Tuesday, okay? Um, this is just another one of those things that you could do. And so if it asks you on the review whether it's separable and you say yes, then you should not be doing it by substitution, right? Because it's not necessary, okay? So the common substitutions that we use is letting x, letting y equal ux and letting x equal uy, where u can be anything. It could be a constant, it could be a function, it could be anything, okay? Um, normally what it is, is it's our variable that we're trying to change everything into, okay? Because once you take the derivative of y and the derivative of ux, you're going to end up with a bunch of dx's and du's, okay? Um, and so because of that, that's why we leave it, we leave it just like that. Um, now, how do you know which one you use and when, okay? What you do is you try to separate it. And if you notice that there's one variable that's not where he's supposed to be and you can't make it go away, <laughs> then that's the one that you're going to substitute, okay? And what you end up doing is, is if you end up using this substitution, you will end up eliminating all the y's and dy's. And you will end up with an expression or an equation with nothing but u's, x's, dx's, and du's. And then it's supposed to be separable. And then you can just solve it using your separable method, okay? Which is the easiest one. So let's look at this one. I've got x dx, and then I've got y minus 2x dy equal to zero, okay? This is good, right? I can integrate that. It's not a problem. It fits the description of being separable. X's are next to dx's. This one is not. You've got x's next to dy's, don't you? That does not fit the description of being separable. And I can't just divide by x to all three terms and make that go away. Because if I do that, guess what? This guy's going to have an x underneath it. And then I still have an x in the problem, in the way, right? So x is the bad guy <laughs> in this particular equation. He's causing an issue right there, okay? <laughs> It's not allowing me to be separable. So x is the one that I'm going to replace, okay? So I'm going to say let x equal uy. And then what's going to happen is eventually I'll end up with nothing but u's and y's and du's and dy's, and hopefully it's separable at that point, okay? Now, if x equals uy, what is dx? Now remember... The derivative of x is 1 dx. The derivative of u would be 1 du. And the derivative of y would be 1 dy. Okay? But you have u and y multiplied together, which means I have to use what rule? If you're trying to take the derivative and it's multiplied together, what rule do you have to use? The product rule. The product rule. So I get the first function, which is u, times the derivative of the second function. And the derivative of y is dy, plus the second function, which is y, times the derivative of the first function. And the derivative of u is du, okay? So now I know what to put in for x, and now I know what to plug in for dx. And we're going to do that. Because, because uh, so the point or the theme from this method is because, let's say if you have a function in terms of y, mm -hmm. it could be, it could be, it could, okay, so y is not a constant, it's a function. Mm -hmm. And x is a constant. Is a function. function mm -hmm. Yeah, because it could be a function.
function in terms of x times the u mm -hmm. because the u could, could have uh, x is 2 and y is o so this product will kind of kind of uh, it, it, it accommodates all of that exactly exactly, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this equation and I'm going to plug in everybody. So x is going to become uy. dx is going to become these two terms. Oops. Then I have y minus 2uy and then dy equal to 0. So make sure you're visually connecting with what's happening, right? The x's are becoming uy, and the dx is becoming this expression, okay? Now, I should be able to separate it, but I've got dy's over here and dy's over there, so I may have to distribute and then reconfigure re, uh, everything, okay? So first thing I'm going to do is distribute the uy, and I'm also going to distribute the dy here. So I'm going to end up with u squared y dy plus u y squared du. y dy minus 2 y dy equal to 0. And now I'm going to regroup all of the du's together and all of the dy's together. Okay. So there's only one term with du. So these three terms, I'm going to put them together. And then the terms that are put together, you want to factor out as much as you could factor out. Okay. So this is just one term. I can't factor one term. Okay, so I'm going to leave that term alone. But these three terms, they all have stuff in common. What do they all have in common? The greatest common factor, right? It's not just dy. What else? They also have a y in common. So if I took that y out, I would have u squared plus 1 minus 2u and then y dy. So remember, if you distribute this, it should be equivalent to that previous line, right? Now there's something else I noticed. That stuff that's inside the parentheses can also be factored. It's just not written in the correct order. Okay? Let me rewrite it in the correct order, like descending order. And then you may be able to see that it can factor. That's actually u minus 1 times u minus 1. What's another way of writing that? Mm -hmm. Now, this was just regrouping and just manipulating them so that they're all factors, right? Now, we have to try to attempt to separate it, okay? So what do I have to divide by to have a function of just u's next to du? What do I need to divide by? What do I need to get rid of here to get it just, just u's in front of du? Uh-huh, the y squared. Which means I would have to divide everybody by y squared, right? Now, looking at the second term, what would I have to divide by just to get the y's with the dy? That means this factor needs to go away, right? Because it's got u's in it. But whatever I do there, I have to do it to everybody, right? So then let's see what we end up with. We end up with u over u minus 1 squared. The y squareds would cancel, and it is separable now. Here, this term would cancel, 
and you actually end up with 1 over y dy. And it doesn't matter, over here, 0 divided by anything is what? Still 0. Oh good, I was like, did I give myself another page? Because I'm going to need it. <laughs> I did. This is why I don't like them, they take they're too much paper. They're so long. They're not hard, it's just they're really, really long. I mean, algebraically, there's not, it's not like confusing like 2.4, right? With all the being able to keep the variables and what you're doing straight. It's just a lot of algebra and a lot of having to rewrite and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite. <laughs> we divide it by the product because we have to make. You have to make this all have u's and this term all have y's. Exactly. So we divide it by the product. Not like, for example, we just divide the first part by. Uh, I just did it in one step. Instead yeah. of doing everything by y squared first and rewriting, and then everything by u minus 1 squared second. You could just yeah. do it together in one step. Mm -hmm. Okay. The second term is easy to integrate, which is ln of y. The first term, however, is ugly because it requires partial fraction decomposition. Okay? And not all of them do, but this one does, okay? I should not, not all of them do, but most of them will in this section. <laughs> so you're going to get some practice with your partial fractions, okay? So I'm going to do it in a totally different color just because it's kind of side work. It's not really integrating yet, okay? So just as my side work, I'm going to scribble here. I got to change that. And then I have to remember my rules for partials. When it has a square, you're going to have a over that factor without the square. And then you're going to have b over that factor with the square. Okay. So if I multiply each term by the u minus 1 squared, which is the common denominator, it will cancel here and I'll be left with u. But only one of them would cancel here, and I'd be left with a times the other factor. And over here, both would cancel, and I'd be left with b. So all I'm doing is eliminating the fractions by multiplying each fraction by the common denominator, which is u minus 1 squared. Okay? If I distribute the a, I get this equation. And then if I set up a systems of equations, um, I get that my variables coefficient should be equal to a, and my constant, which doesn't exist on the left-hand side, should be equal to negative a plus b. Now we're lucky because one of the variables is already obvious, right? a equals 1. But if a equals 1, what would b be? What would b be? What would b equal? <laughs> 1, right? Because negative 1 plus 1 would give me 0, right? So these two together mean that b would have to equal 1. Which means that that equation can be rewritten as 1 over u minus 1 plus 1 over u minus 1 squared. Okay. And in my next step, when I go back to my green color, that's what I'm going to write next to du. Okay, Because that is equivalent to that. Right, because all I have on this side is u. So the, ver the coefficient is 1 and the constant is 0. Whereas here, the coefficient is a, and the constant is negative a plus b. Partial fraction decomposition. If people do it different. Some people say, let u equal 0, and then they have an equation. And then let u equal 1, and you have a second equation, and then they solve the system of equations that way. I don't do it that way. I compare coefficients and constants. But if you're used to doing it that other way, then do it that other way. But there is two different ways to do partial fraction decomp. You'll get the same answer if you do it the other way. 
I'll show you. If I were to let you take this equation right here, right? And let u equal zero, then I would have zero equals zero negative a plus b. Then if I let u equal one, I would get one equals a minus a plus b. And then these would cancel, you get b equals one. And if you plug that back in there, what would a have to be? Zero equals negative a plus one. You minus one, divide by negative, and you get a has to equal one as well. No, that's okay. the way I'm using it. That's okay, you could do it that way. And you get the same thing. So, so your way, what, what you're doing with your way? Like, uh, what I do is I look at the left hand side, okay. and the coefficient of u yep. will get set equal to the same coefficient of u. So here's a coefficient of u, and that was what I have here. Okay. Coefficient of u on this oh, side okay. is one. Okay. There's no constants on this side, so I have zero, but these two are my constants on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. These are the constants. Right. So, but, but in the first one, you just mm -hmm. have to take the, you see what's on the left side of it, right? Coefficient on the, the left side? The left side. And the then coefficients on the right on side. Right. So, the coefficient on the left side is 1. Mm -hmm. So, 1 equals, or the coefficient on the right side for u minus 1, you mean, right? The coefficient over here for u? No, no, I'm saying for the first one, the 1 equals a. This one up here? Yes. That came from multiplying this fraction, this fraction, and this fraction by u minus 1 squared. So if I multiply this fraction by u minus 1 squared, this one by u minus 1 squared, and this one by u minus 1 squared, that cancels, I just have b. This cancels, I just have u. This yeah. only cancels no, 1, and no, I have no, a I, times I, u I minus know, 1. I'm just asking about the 1 equals a. From where did the game come from? This? Yes. Coefficient of u is 1. one. Coefficient of u is a. Oh, and the also the first with the second. We take and then the second equation oh, okay. is the constant. Oh, okay, right, because it just broke it down between the first right. and the second u. Right. Okay, so coefficient of uh, 1, it's a, it's a exactly. And mm -hmm. then. Uh, the constants on this side zero. are 0, oh, okay, okay. and the constants on that side are that. Yeah. Got you got it. Okay. Let's go back to our green problem, right? Here we go. So all that craziness for this. So that is going to become 1 over u minus 1 plus 1 over u minus 1 squared du plus 1 over y dy equal to 0. Dun, dun, dun. So we integrate. Now there's no um, variable, I'm just integrating. And the reason why over here, you already have a du so you know which variable you're integrating with respect to, right? And here you already have a dy so you know which variable you're integrating with respect to. Here you don't have a dx or a dy. But does it make a difference what you're integrating with respect to? What do you get? The derivative of any constant is going to be zero, right? This is not partial integration like you were doing in 2.4, okay? So this right here could be a dx or it could be a dy. And it wouldn't matter which one it was because the integral of zero is going to be a constant, okay? Which means I'm not going to put plus C for these guys and I'm not going to put a plus C for that guy because eventually they're going to move over there and make a big fat C later anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So don't even worry about the C's here. It's already there. Now, here I'm going to manipulate this a little bit. Now the middle term, I rewrote it. 
because that one's not going to be a natural log because it has an exponent, okay? The natural logs, the way they work is if you have a function down here and you have its derivative up top, you're going to end up with the natural log of that denominator. And what is the derivative of u minus 1? Isn't it just 1, right? So here I'm going to end up with the natural log of u minus 1. Over here, I'm doing it with respect to y. What's the derivative of y? It's 1, right? Which is why I get the ln of y over here. But the middle term has a square. So I have to use the power rule. What is the derivative of this? It's just 1, right? So I don't have to worry about u sub or anything like that. Well, it'd be another variable, but we don't have to worry about substitution here. You're going to add 1 to the power. So I get u minus 1 to the negative 1, and then divide by the new power, right? And then I'm just rewriting that. A positive and a negative is a negative. And because it has a negative exponent, that means that that factor actually belongs in the denominator. Okay? Now, normally I would just stop here. Or I would try to solve for y. But I can't yet. Was my original problem given to me in terms of u's? It did not have any use in it, right? So I substitute, you have to remember to back sub as well. Once you're done doing all the dirty work, you gotta put the other guy back in, okay? Now remember, x equaled uy. So what is u going to become? x over y. Yes. x over y is what's going to become the u. So I'm going to end up with ln, what does that look like, a limit? ln of x over y minus 1 minus 1 over x over y minus 1 plus ln of y equal to c. And we've got a lot of manipulation here. Okay. Here I can get a common denominator. That's not too bad to do. I'm going to end up with x minus y over y. Over here, it's a complex fraction. I got a fraction inside of a fraction. So I have to multiply every term by the common denominator. And I end up with y over x minus y. Then I've got to use my log properties to try to fi fix that fraction. So we know that when we divide logs, you actually are taking the numerator minus the log of the denominator. Then what happens to the ln of y's? Mm-hmm. Because you have a negative and a positive, right? So you're going to wipe each other out, those two terms. But you still have ln of x minus y, and then plus c. Now the only thing that the back of the book is going to do is it's not going to have fractions. That's it. That's the only difference between what I have here and what you'll end up with in the back of the book, okay? So this is the denominator, right? So if I multiply everybody by that denominator, this is what you would see in the back of the book, okay? I can't solve for y. You've got one y inside the ln, and then you've got one y outside the ln, and then one y in the denominator, right? <laughs> You're not going to be able to solve for y. So if you want yours to look like what's in the back of the book, just make sure there's no fractions, and it'll match what's in the back of the book, if you did everything else correctly, right?
Okay, I'm gonna have to stop here because I don't want to go into the next example um, and then run out of time. So I only have two more examples. So I'll do those in a separate video and then I'll post them, okay? But they will be there later today as, long, as well as the review for the test, okay? And I think on the review there's probably like one problem that has this method. I don't like it. <laughs> okay. This one? No, from the, from this the, one? No, between the second last and the last. The second to last and the last? Yes. We did this. Okay. And then these went away, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. We just multiplied by the common denominator. Because, I mean, that's correct. That second to last step, it's right. Right. But it's not going to match the back of the book because the back of the book tries to avoid the fractions. So that's the only reason why I multiplied by the common denominator. Mm -hmm.